Good morning, family. It's your brother in Christ, Diamond Dustification from YouTube again. And I do apologize if I have to pause this video more often than I normally do, as I am a little bit sick and I'm still getting over it, okay? I had a uh, recent discussion with one of my subscribers here on YouTube, or perhaps he's merely a frequent viewer, I don't know, that revolved around love. Now, uh, this, this discussion occurred on the video I did about Ben a little while back, the rebuke video. And uh, essentially, he disagreed with the very notion of rebukes, which is... Now, I have I have said, and I stand by, that the truth is its own rebuke, but we're not going to get into that today. But he basically told me that love is the gospel, something along those lines. And I am going to read his comments, and I want to make it clear that this is not a rebuke video of, of this particular individual. But I did find his comments interesting. And, it, and uh, when I first encountered him on my channel, there was something that didn't quite sit right with me about the things that he was saying. Something seemed off. Now, I want to explain something. When it comes to love being the gospel, you have to understand that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. But as 1 John 4 points out, that love comes after salvation, not before. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And we love him because he first loved us, okay? Peter says in sec in 1 Peter 4 about how charity cover covers a multitude of sins. But yet it is also said in Proverbs that he who covereth his sins shall not prosper. So we have to understand that there's different contextual meanings here, okay? And we're also going to read about that when we read this chapter from verse vo uh, 1 all the way down to 8, which is the ones he left out. The secular world preaches a notion of love in, 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 in the, in the, it, that's basically amounts to tolerance. I call it the age of tolerance. And that's how the, the Antichrist is going to get people to a one world religion because it's expressing that we need to tolerate everybody else in their, in their false beliefs and it appeals to the emotionalism of the person. You are your own person. You make you, your body your choice, the same stuff we heard about abortion etc., etc., etc. But that's not the way it is. God has told us what he wants us to do. And while we are not bound to try and earn or keep our salvation by any kind of law keeping because we can't do it if we tried, that doesn't mean that the Lord wants us to throw those things to the wayside and not try to walk in faithfulness by yielding to the Holy Spirit. And neither does it mean that for the atheist, the law has no part to play. The law is meant to convict them to show them that they are sinners in need of a savior. So where does love and charity come in? Well, charity is what is required if we want to be successful. And what do I mean by that? Charity is what governs our actions, the love of God within. If, if we are not governed by love and charity, then we are, can only be governed by the opposite of such, which is pride and sinful flesh. And when we are walking in that level of hypocrisy and judgment, improper judgment, I might add, we become self-righteous and we elevate ourselves and we tear other people down. When you operate in that kind of capacity, you are turning people further and further away from the grace of God. The atheist my, a person is going to look at you and see the hypocrisy. And then you're going to cause the name of God to be blasphemed because they're going to reject it. They're not going to listen to a person that has nothing to say to them except that they need to repent and that they're, that they're worthless sinners. Where's the gospel? Where is the mercy? Where is the admission that all of us have fallen short and do fall, fall short even after we are saved? People need to be approached with a gentle, with a gentle hand and understanding so that they can realize that God loves them. And that is why charity covers a multitude of sins. Because if you approach a man in hatred, He's not going to listen to you, and your witness is going to be ruined. What Peter was referencing here, okay, is Proverbs. In Proverbs 10, 12, it says, Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. Okay? In this, ch and, uh, before I go any further here, let me stop for a moment and talk about why this is on the screen. Highway to Heaven, Season 1, Episode 18, A Child of God. Why is that there? Well, this is a secular movie, and I have watched it a little bit, the series, that is. 
because I, when I was younger, my mother used to watch Little House on the Prairie and the same actor plays in this series. This one stood out to me like a, like a sore thumb. And I'm going to link this in the description box, this video. And I want you guys to go to 4320, that, that particular mark in the video, and you're going to hear this man who is pretending to be a priest say, am I supposed to believe that God is going to condemn a person because he doesn't believe? Well, that's what the Bible says, and I'm sorry if that is, offends you. You know, the, Bible's, the, the gospel is called the gospel of offense for a reason. The Bible says that we will be hated for our testimony, not loved. And that's the truth. Because we can't stand in cohesiveness with false religions and false doctrines. We can't stand in cohesiveness with people that are damning other people to hell, or would if they could. We can't ignore the lamb crying out for help as a wolf is tearing it to pieces because we fear offending the wolf. We have to do something. And it is the people that run away because they careth not for the sheep that are rebuked at the end. I'm not going to run away. And I'm not going to ignore a person crying out to me as he's being torn to pieces because I feel more sorry for the wolf than I do the lamb. That's not my job as a minister. It's not your job as a Christian or a minister or whatever capacity the Lord has given you to serve in the body of Christ, whether it be ministry, marriage, teaching, up school. I don't know. He uses our lives in different ways. So let's read what this man had to say to me. Okay. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said, all will know you are my disciples because you, because you love one another. You have to understand that love is not patting somebody on the back as they pass you by on the wide path to destruction. Love means telling them the truth. And sometimes the truth is offensive and it hurts. And what is the truth? We are sinners. We are guilty before God and we need a Savior. That is love. That's the first step. Love is not ignoring somebody as they walk towards their destruction. Love is not keeping your mouth shut in the face of evil. It is to stand for God, even if it means death. Some people aren't ready for that. Peter wasn't ready. And the Bible even says, you have not resisted unto blood. I understand that. And I'm not saying that you're a bad Christian if the idea of dying for your faith is a terrifying concept to you. The God will not put you into a circumstance that you're not prepared to face. He's always going to use people to their capacity and give you the graces needed therein. But it is not love to stand idle while people walk towards destruction. Love is also not worldly tolerance. I'm not going to walk up to a person that is living in willful sin uh, under a stronghold. I'm not saying that we don't all have our sins to contend with, some of which are always willful. But I, if I see something that is leavening the church, like in 1 Corinthians 5 with the man sleeping with his father's wife, I'm not going to keep silent about that just to avoid offending him or his friends. And if I have to say something, I will because I love that man and I love God. It is because I love this man that I want him to correct his course and walk closer and experience the joys of his salvation more. And it is because I love God that I, tr that I strive to remain in his love to do these things despite the persecution that comes upon me. I am not going to walk around limp and, and, and uh, ineffectual and say that that's love because it's not. This does not go against the rebuke video that I made at all. And above all these things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Charity is love, love is the message, love is the gospel. No. While indeed love is inseparable from the gospel of our salvation. Inseparable. It is not the gospel by itself without Jesus Christ attached to it. If it is a Christless gospel, then it is not the gospel. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life and no man cometh unto the Father but by him. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
And then he says, how, how do we do it by him? Is it by simply loving? No, by believing in him. He said this multiple times. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. Okay? It's about belief. There is something that needs to happen. Hearing the gospel is not enough. Being a loving person is not enough. Because you're not a loving person without God. The only way you can love properly is to be born of God. Does that mean that an atheist can't do a good thing? No. Does even the atheist give a scorpion to his son who begs for food? No. But it's about the spiritual life within a person and whether or not the Holy Spirit is sealed within or you are sealed. You understand? Is the Spirit residing within that person? Because the new creature has been cleansed by the remission that is offered by, blood, by, by Christ, the blood of Christ, by faith and trust in him. And therefore, since we are cleansed, we are now capable of producing good fruit in the sense of good works. Because God sees Christ when he looks at us. And now that the sin is not there, because if one sin is too many, we are capable of being instruments to the kingdom of God. And then, on the other side of the spectrum, we have to understand there's different types of fruits. There's the fruit of salvation, and that's just belief. And you have it the moment you believe. Which is why we, we, we don't follow the lordship idea of uh, salvation and judgment therein. I'm not judging Ben's salvation. I'm not saying that he is not saved. I'm not judging anybody's salvation. I, I, I'm not going to sit up here either and say that I've never done that. I have. But we all have. We've all judged other people wrongly. To sit up here and pretend that we haven't would be disingenuous at best. But, just like all of you, I'm learning as we go. Okay, and I'm talking about times past before I even really started this ministry. Okay, I had to go through these things myself. But, just because I'm not going to say who's saved and who's not saved, you know, if somebody professes to me that they believe the gospel in Jesus Christ and they profess the gospel to me, I'm going to accept that. But that doesn't mean that if they start to act contrary to sound doctrine, that I'm not going to put them out or confront them on these things, especially if they don't listen to reproof. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to follow the scripture, which says if, if he does not hear you, nor he does not hear your brothers, then bring him before the church. And if he doesn't hear the church, put him out. We are told that in Matthew. The verses which talk about this are as thus. I'm going to read them. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Did I not do that with Ben? You saw all the per personal and private emails that were sent, but he did not hear them. So I took with me two, one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. This man has been emailing Rodney, myself, and many others. Didn't hear them. And finally, that's when the re rebuke video came. Does that mean I hate Ben? No. As a matter of fact, I'm fairly confident that Ben will is will and is secure in the Lord. Will be and is. But it would not be love for me to continue to allow Ben to go down this path of destruction. Now there does come a point where you have to depart from somebody. Some might say, isn't that allowing it? No. There, there, has, there comes a point you have to, where you have to accept the fact that it's not your job to try and get somebody to believe something. You can't force it, that is to say, upon them. They have to either accept it or reject it. The watchman gives the message, sounds off the alarm, and if the people don't hear, uh, heed, it's no longer upon his, his head. But if I were to stay silent, then it would make me guilty of omission. Does that mean I'm going to go to hell? That's not my point. 
every one of us are guilty in that way. We've all failed to speak up when we ought because we, we felt that lack of trust within us that God was using us at that moment. We weren't sure. Is this now the right time to say it? Am I going to say it right? Do I have enough? Am I smart enough? You know, all those things trying to wonder if the gospel needs to be delivered in intellect. Well, the Bible says we don't do it by wisdom of words. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not. The scripture says what it says. Now let's read what he said because he said, he mentioned 1 Peter. Well, if you're going to talk about how 1 Peter is trying to say, 1 Peter 4 is trying to say that we're not supposed to judge, then I think you need to read above 1 Peter 4, 8. So let's do that. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excise of excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable adulteries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. The Bible tells us that we have been circumcised from our sinful flesh, and we no longer are a part of our, we no longer have part with the children of disobedience. Now, to be circumcised from our sinful flesh means that we have been grafted into the body of Christ, okay, and in him is no sin. It's a spiritual thing, not a fleshly thing. And with the Holy Spirit within us, convicting us to righteousness and chastising us and all these other things, if we try to walk in that excess of riot as we did before, we're going to encounter fierce chastisement and a, a stunning lack of joy and happiness in the spirit. God is not going to, going to allow the one sheep from the 90 and 9. He's going to seek after them. But notice the other point being made here by Peter. We are supposed to separate ourselves from people that do these kind of things. And it doesn't matter if they're saved or not. Just because I see somebody that's walking in lasciviousness and lust within the church and they claim to be a Christian doesn't mean that I suddenly can't say something about it. Nor does it mean that my saying something about it is me somehow pointing a finger at them and trying to judge them like I'm better than them. You see, if you assume the intent of a person, you yourself are guilty of judgment. And there are many people that watch my rebuke videos that assume my intent is for ill will. There is another man, a minister, as in fact, that is a friend of Ben that came on that video and tried to tell me that I'm self-righteous. My question is why? Is it bad for me to say that you are on a bad course and you need to turn from that? Is that does that make me a bad Christian? Just because there's, they are, there are self-righteous people out there who do those things because they think they're better and they think that their judgment, their judgment is somehow greater like the the Pharisee and the tax collector. I'm not the tax I'm not the Pharisee here. I'm not standing above the tax collector and kicking him while he's down. What I see is a brother or a sister that has been overtaken in a fault. The Bible says, "Ye which are spiritual restore such a one, being careful not to be tempted yourself." I'm trying to use the very charity that you accuse me of not having, the love that I have for this person, to elevate them in the spirit and to get them away from the foundation, but from the foundations of these devils that are trying to set themselves up in this life. What do I mean by that? The, the uh, fortifications, the strongholds. You understand? Because all of us are going to be judged. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? We've all got to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. That's what the Bible says. I'm sorry if you don't want to believe that. And whether for good or ill, loss or reward, that's what's going to happen. 
And I would rather see more people with reward than loss. And if I keep silent in the church because I don't want to offend people, not only am I going to lose out on reward, but I'm going to have to go through the sorrow of watching my brothers and sisters lose out on their reward as well as suffer in this life needlessly because I was afraid to speak up. And if not for them, then for the flock's sake. When somebody's going around within the church preaching a false doctrine and hurting people, weaker brethren, the flock, the babes, it is my job as a minister to say something to, to that. And I have watched so many churches go downhill, just like those in Revelations, because they are afraid to speak up when they ought. I'm not going to suffer that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. I'm not going to stand idle while this is happening. I'm not going to make myself guilty of omission, if I can help it. Why do I say that? Because I don't always see things. I don't always know when these things are happening. But what I do see and what the Lord reveals to me, I try to address as I ought. So what do I see with Ben? I see a poor man that is being tossed to and fro that needs to steady himself on the gospel of grace and the surety of his salvation so that he can preach a gospel that will elevate and lift people up like he claims that he wants to do. I want to get him away from all of these false teachers. I want to get him away from false repentance and accusation because he's not doing anything right now that is good for the body or himself. That is not me being uncharitable. It is the exact opposite. I am being charitable by showing him these things. Being silent is not charity. Being tolerant of wickedness is not charity. The world wants to live in this world of sin. They want to create eternal life in this world. And that's the definition of being, of being damned. To have eternal life without God. That's what they want. They want unity. Unity and diversity. Mixed multitudes. All of us have our own way to heaven. If we come together, and, and just like at the Tower of Babel, we can nothing will be beyond us. But the Bible preaches one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. The Bible preaches, I have standards, and even though you have been saved by my son, I want you to try to walk in faithfulness to me, because I love you, and you love me. And I have better things for you than sinful actions and lifestyles and I'm not saying that you're not gonna that you're gonna do perfectly that you don't you know these things don't just disappear overnight just because you got saved but let's make no mistake here God wants us to try he told us not to quench the spirit and he told us to correct and edify and build each other up it's all through the New Testament. You can't make a dispensational argument here to try and twist the words of Jesus Christ or Peter or anybody else to say that we can't correct each other. That doctrine comes straight from New World Order religion. This new, new uh, what do they call that? New Age religion crap. That's where it's coming from. And it's the same crap that you'll see in this video, which again, look at the timestamp and go watch it for yourself. They want to talk about how it's judgment to preach the true gospel. Well, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is a gospel of offense. Michael, the gospel is Christ. And love comes after. Love is telling people the truth, even if it is offensive to them. Love is correcting people so that they can experience the joy of their salvation and get back on track. Love is introspection so that we do not judge a matter inappropriately trying to remove the speck when the board is in our own eye and if we do do that let's have the introspection to notice it and correct it to pray in the lord in earnestness for help and assistance in all things not just for ourselves but for others to look out for the flock as we ought to do instead of abandoning abandoning them for every wolf that wants to come in over the fence and let's do the job that we were called to do 
I'm not going to preach a message of tolerance because that's not what the Bible is. Nor is it a message of free hippie love. You understand? So if the gospel offends you, if proper biblical rebuke offends you, too bad. Because I'm done trying to appease everybody. There was a time where I thought that I could. No longer. If you don't like my channel, don't watch it. God bless.